Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I make videos for anyone who's looking to improve their chess and their club rating level. And I mainly like to focus on strategy and I like to make um, opening theory videos. Um, and in today's uh, video, I'll be sharing a game I recently played. Um, and I thought it show I thought it was a great, uh, very instructive, and I thought it showcased... Um, kind of a way to positionally outplay your opponent in the Karakam, um, and how to kind of punish your opponent's inaccuracies. Um, so yeah, I thought it was very interesting, and I definitely thought I should share it, because I definitely think this game can help your chess, and help your understanding of the game and strategy. So anyway, let's get into the game. My opponent here started off with e4, um, c6, d4, and d5. He went um, e5, he went for the advanced variation. Here I went bishop f5. Um, my opponent went uh, knight f3, and I just went e6. This is uh, very standard. Um, my opponent played bishop e2, so he's going for the uh, short variation of the advance. And um, it's definitely a very popular uh, way for white to continue. Um, here I went h6. Um, h6 is interesting you can definitely go c5 but i i just played h6 in the game um it's it's just a uh it's just a way i knew i could play without you know uh playing terrible moves because i i don't really know the theory to the c5 lines and i know h6 is fairly straightforward okay castles and 97 my opponent played rookie one um what's very strange um, because I'm not really sure what it does. Um, probably should try and develop these pieces because this rook, if anything, is probably better on f1. Um, maybe if uh, white wants to play some kind of like f4 and you know, something like that. Um, but anyway, I went bishop g6, and the whole idea behind h6 is to uh, put your bishop on g6 or g7 and then go knight f5. Just in case any of you play the Karo Khan, this is definitely an idea you could adopt in your games. Uh, knight d2, um, knight f5. I also just want to say something. Um, after bishop g6, if you're wondering, uh, does bishop h4 do anything? Uh, sorry, knight h4 do much because um, taking away the my he's kind of maybe trying to stop my idea. Um, because if I go bishop h7, my opponent could maybe go bishop d3. Oh uh, well, if this did happen, all you have to do is just exchange, takes, and go c5. Um, see, so, and the knight's misplaced. The center is gonna we're threatening to take and then um, attack this and make isolate kind of this pawn. If he ever tries to uh, defend the pawn with f4, this diagonal's weak, and yeah, also our pawns are on light square, so our bishop's better and his bishop's pretty miserable. So yeah, um, just in case you're wondering, and you also have to waste the tempi. Um, I thought that was an interesting thing to point out. Um, so bishop g6, knight d2, and here I went knight f5. I'm just continuing my whole idea behind h6. Um, just getting this set up. And my opponent here played knight f1. What's quite strange, because... Uh, this this is an idea in the Karo Khan, but this this idea normally happens, I think, when uh, white goes knight c3 um, instead of playing the short variation. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's why I'm pretty sure there are some. There definitely are some variations where knight f1 is played. I think even before um, white has a castle. Um, so so yeah, but in this but in this line, I don't think it's that good. Anyway, I continue with bishop e7. Uh, extremely normal c3 and castles um queen b3 and here queen b3 is hmm, i think it's a bad move um queen b3 could almost be called it, it's an inaccuracy and almost be called a waste of a tempi if you exploit this uh, move correctly so first of all you're probably uh wondering it's definitely right to reason can uh can black just go queen b6 here? Well, if, say, if takes, a, a b takes, uh, we can undouble this pawns and sit and play c5, and um, we can also, our pawns won't be isolated, so we can play c5 here, 
and we can uh, support it with these pawns. And we also have the open um, A file. And this is extremely easy to play for, for black. Um, yeah, black here has a very pleasant game. Uh, for example, I'll just show kind of a sample line. If, if, if say, white tries to go something like knight c3, we just go like c5 and I'm not sure, say, just random move like h3. Uh, here we can probably even just uh, take, uh, takes and play like knight c3. And this is, we can maybe we can play f6 and play like bishop f6 and yeah, this is this is very playable. Um, there's probably a better way to to play, but that's just it's very easy. You get these open files. Um, but here I went queen c7. So also, if I was to go queen b6, white would probably have to go queen d1, um, just wasting a move. Um, but I went queen c7 anyway. Um, I I did know that uh, queen b6 in the game. I knew it was a okay move uh, for sure, but I just decided to go queen c7. I wanted to support c5, but if I had this position again, I would. Uh, it would be a 50-50 um, split decision, pretty much. All right, my opponent played a uh, 93, and here I went c5. Uh, so I'm attacking my center, and the um, whole idea be behind uh, this kind of setup of h6 and putting my knight on f5 is now I'm going to attack the center a bit later in the game instead of going for the immediate c5. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great, I think it's a good way to play. Um, and after c5, my opponent here played h3. Now, h3... I don't really know what my opponent's trying to do, um, but I just want to say this is this. I think this game, the, the whole idea I'm showing this game is how to exploit your opponent playing inaccuracies. Because a lot of the games we win, say in the club rating level as club players or amateurs, will always kind of win uh, mainly from kind of t really bad mistakes from our opponents or blunders. But this game is more about showing how to win with inaccuracies. Um, and definitely lots of people uh, in the club rating level win with inaccuracies, but I'm just uh, showcasing this game. Um, anyway, after h3, I went, um, I went ic6, um, attacking, putting more pressure on the center. And this center is definitely coming under a lot of um, pressure. I also want to say an extremely important thing. Oh, this, this pawn structure with this pawn on c3 is extremely common. Um, in in uh, games when the pawns on d4 and supported by c3 and uh, this 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 is also i think an interesting this game also shows an interesting w uh, way to kind of attack this structure with this whole kind of these pawns because you'll see the it doesn't matter what opening you play you'll see this structure a lot there's lots of um curry calms i think even like in the london system sometimes i've seen this these uh, structures so yeah not always the pawn is on e5, though. Um, and here, my opponent after after h3, after a knight c uh, sorry after knight c6, my opponent took. Um, so I mean, I'm not sure because taking, I mean, taking it it, it doesn't make my position any worse. I mean, it doesn't make his position any better. I don't think, and um, just I mean, just give me this nice bishop. I mean, my knight is putting pressure here, so that's maybe why he took. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't. I, this is not. This doesn't uh, hurt me at all. Then my opponent played bishop e three, and now I went c four. And the whole queen b three idea now you're seeing is now you're seeing that now I play c four with tempi. So my opponent is losing so much time in this game, like so much valuable time. It's it's honestly insane. Um, okay, my opponent played uh, queen d1, and here I went b4, b5. Now, like I was saying, when this pawn is on c3, always try and work out a way to push your b pawn and attack this pawn. And then you normally try and double up your rooks and put it on the second file. So it's just, it's just a plan you should always try and adopt. It's a plan I've, uh, I think is really good. Um, and my opponent here played g4. Um, now, g4, I'm, you know, I'm not sure w what this does. Um, he's trying to, he's trying to, I mean, actually, he is trying to attack me, but it, sh it just doesn't work. 
Okay, I went bishop e4, putting pressure on this knight. I could go bishop h7, um, but bishop e4 is more active. He can't also, taking the fact he can never really take advantage of my bishop placed here. And it's just more uh, in his position. Okay, my opponent played knight h2. Um, here I went b b4, now attacking this pawn uh, f3. And just bishop h bishop h7. You may be wondering... Just, just, just um, an interesting thing. If I go bishop g6, um, I'm just putting my bishop. He he could probably just gain some unnecessary tempies for my bishop here. So just tucking my bishop where he cannot attack it and not allowing him any nonsense. Um, he went uh, f4, and here I have two options. I mean, I took, um, but I could definitely play f6 here and open up this rook. I mean, I can play on both sides of the board here, and it's both crushing. Um, but I took, he takes, and now I go queen a queen a five. So, getting my uh, queen into his position with Tempe, this is pretty much a dream. Um, he went uh, queen c one, and here I went uh, bishop a three. Yeah, I went uh, bishop a three. Uh, my opponent played um, queen d two, and here I played rook uh, b eight. Now look how nice his bishop is, not allowing uh, him to go to b1. Um, he went f5, trying to close down the diagonal, but too weak, too slow. Rook b2, and queen, queen d1, and I take this pawn. I'm up a pawn now, and I have a way superior position. Um, he played a bishop f2, because he's bishop under attack, and now I just take. Takes, takes, and bishop f3. Now, here I went uh, bishop c2, uh, queen e2, and just, oh, sorry, I did not play knight e, yeah, I played knight d4. But I just want to say one extremely uh, important thing here. What I think is pretty funny is that. In this position, this does not look like a board game to me. This looks like a shooter game. Yeah, to me, this does not look like a uh, chess game. To me, this looks like Call of Duty with um, these bishops. Like this is this position is so violent, it's insane. Anyway, bishop c2, uh, knight e4 takes takes. Uh, here, my opponent played queen e3, and here I did. I did actually miss, um, after queen d3, I should have just taken and played bishop c5. Um, uh, it's all winning, but I played bishop c bishop c5 just so fast, I thought he had to block with the rook for some reason. Um, but anyway, it's still winning. Uh, he went king h1, uh, bishop f5, uh, bishop d5, and bishop h6. Now he's bishop is pinned to this diagonal because we're friending mate and one. And um, here he played rook d1, bishop uh, b6. There's an interesting story behind bishop b6, by the way, because I almost played rook d1 here. I mean, sorry, rook d8. I was like a split second away from playing rook d8, and then I realized my bishop was hanging. But rook d8 anyway is still winning. What's insane. Um, I think here I can go like even bishop g2. Or, actually, I can probably do this. Takes, takes, here. And, yeah, this is still winning. Um, yeah, because this pawn is weak. I have a passed pawn. And this knight can never move. Because I have rook g2. I mean, that that's like that's, a, that's if I mouse slip. Uh, but I was so close to playing this. But it's not actually a blunder. But anyway, I did not play rook d8. I played uh, bishop b6. Uh, rook c1, rook d8, rook, uh, rook c3, he, he uh, played bishop f7, just, I'm not sure, just giving up pieces. And uh, after rook e3, I played rook d1, knight f1, and bishop g2, and in this position my opponent resigned, and this... Yeah, this game was actually meant a lot to me because it was really the first game I really ever just completely outplayed my opponent. Um, it was one of, the, yeah, pretty much the first game where I won 
kind of using kind of uh, well-known strategic ideas and not kind of just having my opponent make a, a pretty bad mistake or a pretty like terrible positional mistake instead of more just inaccuracies. Um, uh, so yeah, so we'll go over some, uh, just some extremely crucial points is that remember my opponent played this rookie one and he wasted time with h3 and this is just a great example of um uh i'm not by the way when i say great example i'm not trying to make myself uh, sound like I'm a really good chess player i'm just saying uh, this this is a i think this is an interesting way that i think if you that you could definitely implement in your game and help you win because I learned a lot from this game. You normally, don't learn so much from your wins. You normally learn more from your losses. So it's, it was quite unique in that uh, sense. Where I learned actually lots from this game. Um, but yeah, here I uh, playing after h3. Uh, also, I'm attacking. I, I uh, played h6. Put my bishop. Put the setup, and then I attacked e center later. Uh, might c3. And yeah, this was the crucial moment. Playing c4, and after queen d1. Attacking this pawn, not letting, uh, just just going all out on the queen side. Um, so yeah, I thought it was interesting. Um, hopefully you learned something. If you play the uh, Karo Khan advanced variation, then this might be of great use. Or if you ever uh, play against this pawn structure, I'm pretty sure it's called the Karl's Bat. Um, I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure, but I'm a hundred percent if this is like the proper cow's bad, but I'm I'm pretty sure it is. You can correct me in the comments. Oh, and by the way, I have uh, seen uh, some of the lots of lots of um, I have had some uh, nice messages. Um, um, it's really nice to hear them. Um, and I do know a lot of you are writing them, and then they won't come up in the comments. But I have seen them, and I do appreciate all of them. Um, I think I'll need to like you can tell me. Uh, you can try and tell me in the comments. Um, how I fix that because lots of comments you're writing and then they won't actually come up and but it will say like two comments on the video But there won't be any but I think I need to do something with the settings. You can tell me if you know um, but Yeah, hopefully you learned something also uh, coming and attacking this pawn And also if you ever kind of have this position where your opponent has this weak pawn here because you've gone with this b4 b5 idea not try and follow it up with like doubling up on this file. That's I think that's a good way to finish it up but anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope the video was of value. If you did learn anything or if you did enjoy it, please leave it a like because it definitely supports out the channel. And yeah, have a great rest of your day.